How many devices are there in this room that could answer the question, what time is it? Think about all the clocks and cell phones and all the various things we have, right? Time is how we order our life together. We have calendars to track our days and weeks, clocks to track our hours and minutes, and, and cell phones to ping at us incessantly to remind us where to be. And whether we perceive time as something that's relentless or a taskmaster that never lets up, or whether we perceive time as a gift, we are all in the same time together, right here in, in, in the present, between the past and the future. There is a way in which some people seem to move through time gracefully and, and be able to, to just kind of glide through their days, and others that seem to struggle, never seeming to have enough time, and I must confess that I am one of the latter. Uh, because I can juggle three or four balls well, I tend to try to juggle seven when it comes to keeping track of things. And, and so I, I, uh, I do not move through time gracefully. I was reminded of the impact of this last weekend. As you may have noticed, I was not here. Uh, I, was, uh, I was offered a gift. Um, Wolf Kristen offered to preach for me, and, and it's almost a gift that I did not take. I uh, was talking to a friend about, I, I'd started working on a sermon, and a friend talked to me, I was talking to a friend, and the friend said, uh, stop it. They take the Sunday off, seriously. And, and so I'm glad I was talked out of it because I uh, went out to eat with Olivia and the kids and we had coffee afterwards and we just sat there and enjoyed time together. And I didn't worry about anything. I haven't done that in a long time. And uh, we spent the day together on Saturday, went to Mass on Sunday morning and w went home and had lunch together and it was an actual Sabbath. Uh, it was really good. I, I don't point this out just to give thanks to, to Rolf, who, who gave me this great gift. Uh, but to point out Rolf, I don't know how well you know him, but he is someone who moves through time gracefully. He, he seems to go through his days without the struggles that I, I seem to always be in the middle of. And I think it might have something to do with what he prays. I don't know if you've noticed this line is in all of his prayers. Whenever he prays, he prays, thank you for all that we have done and all that we have left undone. I, I think that might be a prayer I need to learn to pray myself this coming year. I tell that story not only to publicly thank Rolf, but, but also to point out this uh, wisdom of moving through time gracefully, using time well. It is a gift that God gives us the time that we have in our days. And uh, when we honor how God wants us to use that time, I think what we call that is wisdom. Right? And, and that's what we're looking at today, the wisdom of the wise men. What is the wisdom of the wise men? Why do we call them wise as opposed to anything else. And I think part of it is the wisdom of how they use their time, what they did first. Because that's what it is to use time well, is to know what comes first, what comes second, to use time well. To, to put it colloquially to, colloquially, to use time well is the art of not getting the cart in front of the horse. And to not get the cart in front of the horse, it keeps things moving smoothly. Right. So what did the wise men do that was so wise? Well, well, when they came to what they did with their time, the first thing we find them doing is traveling so they can get to church. Right? They were traveling so they could get to worship, they, so they could pay homage, which is a fancy word for going to worship. They traveled for months so that they could show up and worship. And it's easy for us to forget all the things they didn't have figured out, right? They set out on this journey. And do they know where they're going? No, they don't, right? Do they know the political situation to which they're walking? Nope. Right? Do they understand what the royal family needs? Not really. Do they understand the danger they're in as they try to go back home? Not at all. They're fairly clueless in general. They walked into the capital asked King Herod about a new king, and the whole city got nervous, right? So they, they don't know what danger they're walking into. Uh, and they show up on the doorstep of Mary and Joseph, and they show up with three gifts. They give gold, which is kind of like cash. It's a good color. It always spends. But other than that, they showed up with the, the first century equivalent of sensi and, uh, and a, a, a ticket or a certificate for a, a free um, whole... They put you in a box and they put you in the ground in it, usually called a casket. 
Dork, 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 dork. Yeah, they show up. Here's your newborn child. We want you to have some gold, some smelly stuff, and a free casket. Right? Is that exactly what you would show up to a baby shower with? This is it, it, right. This doesn't make a lot of sense. This is. If I might be a little bit stereotypical, it sounds like guys shopping for a baby shower. They kind of whiffed. But, uh, and then they leave to go home by another way, but only because they've been warned in a dream. Because if they had gone back the same way they come, I'm fairly certain Herod would not have let them just pass on through. Right? They're, they're fairly clueless. They don't know much. But what they do know is that they want to start with faith. They want to start with worship. They have, they have enough faith, enough understanding, enough belief to seek out Jesus, and then they'll start figuring out from there. That's what makes them wise, right? They begin, the, the first thing they do is to act on their faith, and then they start figuring it out from there. They don't fully understand. They don't know what they're getting into. They can't get their minds around to what type of king they're seeking, but they have enough faith to say, well, there's a king, it's west of here. Let's go. And, and off they go. They have faith, and their faith is seeking understanding. And, and from there, they, they start to figure it out. We, we live in a time where that seems a bit counterintuitive. We want to have everything figured out before we start something, right? We want to have everything sorted out in writing, signed, crossed, dotted, everything figured out, because that, that's what comes naturally. And what we're seeing in the wise men is, no. You start with faith, and then you figure it out as you go from there. Faith seeking understanding. We have experienced that in our own lives, right? There are things we can't understand until we get into them. Right? When it comes to worshiping God, this is definitively true. We come to worship first, and then we go forth and we start to experience the connection between forgiving and forgiveness. I can't be forgiven if I am not forgiving, right? But we don't experience that till we start with being forgiven in worship. We, we start by having silence in worship, and then we go forth and understand in silence we start to be able to hear, be still and know that I am Lord. Right? We begin with worship, and then we can go forth and having heard about if we serve others, as you do unto the least of these, you do it unto me, then we can start to find Jesus in others. Right? There are things we will never understand about God until we start with worship without starting with faith. And, and, and so that, that's about how we order our lives. Right? We start with faith. It's what we do first with our time. And, and that is reflected in the fact that you are here this morning. Because you may have noticed that this is Sunday, right? All day long, Sunday. And uh, if you read the Old Testament, what is the Sabbath? Is it Sunday? No, it's Saturday. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. It is the Jewish tradition based upon the Old Testament that uh, the Sabbath is Saturday, right? Those who worship Jesus worship on Sunday. Why is that? It has to do with how we use our time. What do we begin with? If you go back to the first century, in the first century, uh, the Jews and the Jews who followed Jesus were worshiping at the same time and having some disagreements. I like Jesus. I don't. Well, that's a problem. And, and so they split. And the Jews who followed Jesus had to decide, do we keep on worshiping on Sunday or do we try something else? And they decided that Sunday was the day of the resurrection, so we should worship on Sunday, because that's what we're celebrating. But also, to worship on Sunday shifted the emphasis of worship. Right? It shifted worship from the ending of the week to the beginning. Because this is the first day of the week, right? If the seventh day of the week is Saturday, then Sunday is the first day of the week, which answers forever the question, which, which way should the calendars be lined up? Should it be Saturday and Sunday at the end of the week, or Saturday and then Sunday on the left side? The Sunday should start the week on a, in a, on a calendar, because for Christians, because of, of this, we start our week with worship, right? It lines up with what the wise men do, right? They start with worship, and then they figure out everything else in light of that. But that's the Christian pattern. We start with worship, and then the rest we make sense of in light of worship. Right? We worship, we gather together, and we notice that we have a Lord who forgives us, and then we go forth and figure out how to forgive others. We don't understand how we're going to forgive others, but we start here, and then we go figure it out. Right? We have faith in a Lord who, is, who accepts everyone at this table. 
And so then we go forth, and in a world where there are a lot of divisions between people, we start figuring out how to uh, accept everyone. Right? We have faith in the Lord who is at the table, then we go forth to try to understand how we're going to do that. Right? We have faith in a Lord who we gather around who says he fulfills all of Torah and that the Jews are God's chosen people. And then we go forth and we have to figure out what that means. And I still don't have an answer. If you ask me what does it mean for the Jews to be God's chosen people today, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. I have faith. I'm still seeking understanding here. But I know if I'm ever going to figure it out, I'm only going to figure it out because I have been in worship. As we order our lives together, as we order our time, as we start this new year, we start with worship. The first day of the week, the first thing we do on Sunday is we worship. And then we try to make sense of the rest of the week based upon what we have done here. That is the wisdom of the wise men, that they start with worship. They don't have a lot figured out, but they know where to start. Here. Amen. Please join me as we...